Okay, do the same thing. Go ahead and pause it. Tanya, the OT, will use materials such as nook brushes, washcloths, and textured foods with spencer each week to decrease his oral sensitivity to textures. You can really just kind of take the two decreases oral sensitivity to textures out there. That's just to show you what the outcome was or what, what area the outcome was related to. Go ahead and pause this. Okay, again, it looks like Tanya is going to do something, and it's very jargony. A family is likely to read this. Tanya is going to use some stuff with Spencer each week so he gets better. So there are a lot of things that we could do better there um, in phrasing this outcome. First off, nook brushes are a lot like toothbrushes, washcloths we use all the time at bath time, and we can use different types of textured foods at mealtime. So these strategies fit really nice and neatly within a routine. It might be better to say something like, Tanya will show Spencer's caregivers how to use nook brushes at toothbrushing time, washcloths at mealtime, and different textures of foods at mealtime with Spencer. Okay, go ahead and pause this one. Kendall's mom and dad will read to him each night so his preliteracy skills will improve. Well, there are a lot of goofy things about this one. But the main point to be made with this one is that it sort of sounds judgmental. Even though the implementer is clearly Kendall's mom and dad, it sounds like it's a contract with him. It sounds like we don't like that they're not reading to him. And so it's not phrased in a way that seems supportive, but more like a contract. Okay, go ahead and pause this one. Maisie's mom will use one-inch blocks to demonstrate stacking, so Maisie will be able to stack blocks. So clearly this is not embedded into a routine. It doesn't make use of a routine as a natural learning opportunity. If it's related to an outcome, well, that, that could be interesting. I wonder if the outcome is to, is, you know, the so there, you know, so Maisie will be able to stack blocks. Um, that's problematic if that's the case. Uh, it's, it is understandable. It's great that we've used the word demonstrate. Even show might even be better. We haven't used the word modeling. That's great. Uh, maybe several team members have participated in this, and it's um, the implementer is certainly the caregiver. That's great. It you know may or may not be seen as judgmental. Uh, demonstrating or modeling is a great evidence-based strategy especially with the caregiver there doing it, but it's not part of a routine and it doesn't sound like it's related to a functional outcome. Okay, go ahead and pause this one. Jerry, the PT, will give Spencer's mom and dad range of motion exercises they can use with Spencer each day. Hey, we're getting a little better here. All right, go ahead and pause this one. Okay, pause this one. Barbara will show Maisie's mom and child care teacher how to use a strategy called Wait, Ask, Say, Show, Do. They can use each time Maisie needs help to encourage her to begin to use words. All right, this would be an example of one that maybe didn't fit neatly into a routine as, a, as such a time of day or a particular activity that happens during the day. But this was written based on a child who really uh, had a difficult time when she needed help, particularly when her shoes came untied. And I'm not sure why we didn't just move to Velcro shoes, but we didn't. And every time her shoes became untied, she really had trouble using the words that she had. And really, any time she needed help, she had trouble using the words that she already had. And so the antecedent really doesn't make sense to be of a named routine here. It's any time she needs help. And this says we're going to use a strategy called this, and by putting it in quotes, it sort of sends the message that we know you don't know what this means. All right, so what about outcomes that are more family outcome in nature? Those that I just showed you were pretty easy. They're child development kind of outcomes, but what about when it's not about 
child development. What I'd like for you to do is to take a look at these eight priorities that are, and concerns that real families have listed, real families I've worked with have listed, and I would like for you to take a stab at writing an outcome and writing some strategies for these. I'll give you a little background for each of these. Uh, the first was a family who lived in a rural area of Alabama, spent lots of time on the road taking her child who had multiple disabilities and a rare diagnosis to lots of doctors. She in a lot of ways felt like the doctors just wanted to keep up with her child because of the rare diagnosis. But she had a great pediatrician who she trusted a lot. All right, number two. This was a teenage mom and her mother really would have been willing to keep her child. Okay, well I hope that was helpful as you think about writing outcomes and strategies for IFSPs uh, for infants and toddlers and their families. I'll look forward to discussing with you those last examples, the eight examples on the last slide, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing how you phrase those as outcomes for families that might fit within the IFSP and as you think about strategies. Take care!